As we were just discussing with Mr. Waugh, gardeners often face a dilemma. You want to raise a nice crop of something edible in your garden, but you also want to conserve honeybees at the same time. And we have a prime example right here. Our asparagus patch is about eight years old and it's very well established. Well, our dilemma is that the pest level is also very well established and we have some asparagus beetles that are infesting our asparagus crop and they're really munching down on it. Now the asparagus beetle itself is just a little black and red beetle with a beige cross on its back and it chews on the tips of asparagus spears. That's the adult damage. You can see a little bit of evidence of it right down here with this spear crooking over. What happens is one side gets munched on, the other side is not damaged and the cells continue to expand and grow and it gets crooked over. Aphids cause similar damage on crops as well. Well, these are very busy beetles. Not only are they munching, but they're also making more beetles and they're laying eggs all over the new spears and also the older ones that are ferning out. And the eggs look like a little, just a small, um, speck almost, about a millimeter long, and it's inserted in the side of the spear and also in the foliage, so it's very hard to get the eggs off. You just can't wipe them off. They're actually injected into the tissue. Also, the larvae are on there, and they're feeding on the foliage as well, and the larvae look like small charcoal gray worms, about two millimeters long, and they eventually just sort of get fat and rounded looking. Well, our dilemma is we'd like to control these pests in our asparagus patch so it stays clean, but we also want to protect honeybees. Now there are several products that are recommended for control of asparagus beetles in the garden and those include seven, malathion, ryania, rotenone, and pyrethrin. But we wanted to check and make sure which ones would be safest for honeybees. And so we checked in our OSU Extension Agents Handbook and this handbook is kept in place at all extension offices across Oklahoma and many master gardener offices use this as a reference and county agents of course always use it. Well inside under pesticide safety there is a chart that gives us tips on the relative toxicity of different pesticides to honeybees and this is very valuable information if you're concerned about protecting honeybees in your neighborhood. So we look down through here and Pesticides are rated as either highly toxic, moderately toxic, or relatively non-toxic to honeybees. Interestingly enough, as Mr. Waugh was telling us, seven and malathion are both considered highly toxic. Now what this means is that a beekeeper can suffer severe losses in their hive if their honeybees visit your garden even the day after you have sprayed those two products. Whereas if you use something a little more benign to honeybees, such as pyrethrin, rotenone, or ryania, those are all listed in the relatively non-toxic category. And that means that these can be used around bees with a minimum of injury. Even so, we recommend that you wait until evening to do any spraying. Now the product that we've chosen is one that is pretty readily available for most homeowners at, at most any lawn and garden outlet. And it's a ready to use spray of pyrethrin. Now pyrethrin is a synthetic formula that is similar in chemistry to pyrethrum, which is a botanical insecticide from the chrysanthemum family. Pyrethrin has a very quick knockdown on adult insects, but it will not control larvae or eggs, and so you do need to reapply it from time to time, but it is relatively safe to bees. You always want to check the label on the back of each product that you buy. Make sure that it is labeled for use on asparagus and that it is labeled to control asparagus beetles. And this one has both those on the label so we know that we can use that. As always, you wanna wear long sleeves, cover up, make sure that you wear some gloves when you apply any of these products and wash up appropriately afterwards. Now what about harvesting asparagus? Well, you can harvest asparagus right until it becomes too small to pick. And we have some prime examples here. Of course, you want to wait a day after you spray most pesticides and they'll tell you what that harvest interval is. Most young asparagus patches, when they're first planted the first year, you don't want to harvest any of the spears. You just want the ferns to grow up. After the patch has been in your garden for one year, you can harvest for about a week and the spears will tell you when it's time to quit harvesting. Here's a prime example here. When asparagus spears come up and are this diameter, 
right here, or smaller, then it's time to cease harvest and let it all grow up and fern out. And once a patch like this gets well established after a few years, you can harvest for about eight weeks in the springtime before that starts to happen. And so you'll keep a real healthy patch that way. Well, before I get ready to, har to uh, spray this asparagus for asparagus beetle, I want to go ahead and harvest some spears. And another point I'd like to make is if you go away for the weekend and your asparagus patch gets a little bit overgrown, such as these spears right here, the tips are still quite tender, and you can go ahead and eat those. The lower part is going to get quite woody, and as you can see, it's a lot harder to snap over. You can still eat those, but what you'll want to do is peel away this outer tissue, and even then, if it's too woody, you might want to discard the lower parts and put those in the compost. But that up upper part, even though it would not be considered marketable, can certainly still be eaten. We hope you've enjoyed this classic from the Oklahoma Gardening Vault. Remember, even though these tips and techniques are timeless, there's always something new to learn in the world of gardening. By subscribing to both Oklahoma Gardening and OK Gardening Classics, you'll have access to a wealth of gardening knowledge, both classic and contemporary.